And after four or five years in that, and you know, as things begin to mount up, things that uh, you were bringing upon yourself uh, because of drinking, and and th- those things became more of a heavy burden on your shoulders, and it, it becomes unbearable. The weight on your shoulders because of things that you've caused upon yourself because of of, uh, of drinking. Stay good day. Welcome, my friends, to The Storyteller, where you'll find First Nations people from across Native North America who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. On today's program, we'll hear more from Alan Jolly, a Cree from Northern Ontario, as he shares about the unbearable weight of his sin and where that led him. And I remember those nights when I couldn't sleep and I was so sleepy, I wanted to go to bed, but I was afraid to go to bed because I was afraid that those people that were drunk might might fall on me when they're drinking and and fighting. And I remember thinking to myself, I I felt so so miserable uh, in that situation. And and I remember thinking to myself as a 14-year-old, if I ever get married and have a family of my own, I'm not going to bring them through something like this. I, I hated the drinking. That was going on. I hated that life. My my dad and even my mom, uh, when she got involved in it too, and they were different people when they were drunk. And my dad is sort of the most loving person when he's sober. But when he was drunk, he was the, the worst person to to be around with. He, you know, We became afraid of him as, as, as young boys uh, growing up. So we hated that kind of life and what the alcohol was doing. But of course, by the time I was 19... I got caught up into it. I, I couldn't get away from it. So I guess it's, even though I don't blame anybody for it, I think maybe at one time, maybe I did blame my parents. Well, I got into drinking and all the things associated with that because you people were, you know, were drinking and you brought that into our home and and uh, and, and us boys got, got into it as well. But the more I think about it, I nobody forced me to drink. In the end, I... I, I I took the the bottle myself, and uh, as, even though young as I was, and and uh, immature in many ways, and not strong enough to make decisions of my own, but uh, to this day, when I look back on it, I wish I, I wish I could have said no, I, I'm not doing that. And even if I have to move away from home, I'm going to just to get away from the drinking. But anyway, I got caught up into it, and 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 for the next. Uh, Five years of my life, I was involved in drinking. Uh, it seemed like every weekend and and the money that I made from working, uh, I spent most of it uh, just wasting it away, squandered away in, in drinking. And uh, I thought I was having the best time of my life. Uh, being a young guy from 19 till 23, 24. But after so many years doing that, and life begins to take its toll. And drinking causes you to to get involved in a lot of other things that you wouldn't normally do when you're when you're sober, and uh, and that's what happened to me. And after four or five years in that, and you know, as things begin to mount up, things that uh, you were bringing upon yourself uh, because of drinking, and and th- those things became more of a heavy burden on your shoulders, and it, it becomes unbearable the weight on your shoulders because of things that you've caused upon yourself because of of, uh, of drinking. When I was um, 22, the girl that I was involved with at that time who was my wife today, and and, and she became pregnant with, with our um, oldest son there. And, uh, and that's when it really got me thinking about things. And uh, I said to myself, well, here, I said to myself when I was 14, if I ever have a family of my own, I will never bring them through this, drinking. And, the, and even times when I used to see my mother being beaten up by my father. And I used to say to myself, I'll never do that me when I, if I ever get married. So when I got married, my wife and I got married, and then we were expecting our, our child there in, in October. We got married in, in the month of June. June 9 of 1972, and I was still drinking now and then. I was slowly stopping, but but I, I tried to stop on my own, and and but now and then I, I get caught up into it again. 
so just uh, the heavy burden that I felt uh, from the way that, that I was living, and plus the, the responsibility I felt uh, from having a wife, and then we're going to have a, a child and a family of our own eventually, and then just uh, uh, just a tremendous uh, load that I felt on my shoulders. Well, uh, what am I going to do? Uh, what what kind of life will I provide for my wife, for my children? I, is this the life that they're going to have to go through? Just like what I went through, all the drinking that happened in our home and how awful that was. And then the promise that I had made to myself that I would never do that. So th those things really got me thinking. And it was the first time that I really thought about God again. And uh, even though I had given up on God because I had spent seven years in residential school going to church every Sunday and even being an altar boy and all that, I had given up on God. I, I didn't think there was any way a person could really truly know God. But somehow, in the back of my mind, I felt that uh, the answer was, was, was God. I, I thought of other things, uh, other things that could bring happiness uh, to my wife and to our family. If, I thought, well, if, maybe if we had, if I had a good job and made money. I even thought about uh, celebrities like movie stars, and I know those kind of people too are not totally happy either. So it made me really wonder and ask the question: Well, what what is true happiness all about? Where can you find true happiness? And that is when I really thought about God. I I thought to myself, God must be the only answer. He He must be the only hope in this situation. And I did something, and I, to this day, I have to believe that the Lord led me to this. I had the Bible, or at least I knew about the Bible, and I always felt in my heart that uh, the Bible was uh, a sacred book. I never read it that much. I vaguely remembered some of the verses that I had heard in, in the residential school. And one of them that came to my mind was where it says, I believe it's in Matthew chapter 7, Ask, and it shall be given. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. I remember that verse vaguely. And the more I thought of that verse, it just seemed to speak to me. And it said that there was a condition to that verse. And uh, it's, seek, and ye shall find. And I thought to myself, well, maybe I haven't been seeking. Why I can't find God. Or I haven't been knocking. I haven't been persistent enough knocking and, and seeking God. That's what I thought of. And uh, it was right there and then that I kind of decided, I said, I picked up a Bible and I said, God, if this is your word and if it's you intended this for me, then I'm going to make a point to read it. I've tried to read it before, but I couldn't understand anything. But I'm going to read it. I'm going to believe that this is your word and that you have a message for me there. So I made a point to read the Bible every evening for about two weeks straight and I started in the New Testament the book of Matthew I went through all the the four Gospels and I believe I was into uh, the book of Acts but as I read the four Gospels I began to understand certain messages that were there uh, I began to understand that there's hope uh, even if if you're down and out and if, if you feel you're down in the gutters and you got nowhere else to turn. I understood the message in the Bible that there's hope. There can be a new beginning. That there can be forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins. And a, and a new life. And I understood the message of love that it spoke about. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I read about eternal life. There was one verse that I could remember to this day. I was in the book of John chapter 7 and verse 38. And where the words that Jesus spoke when he said, uh, He that believeth in me, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of water. And then the next verse explains what Jesus was talking about. Because it says, this he was referring to the Holy Spirit that would be given to them that believe in him. Man, that just blew me away when I when I read that. And I thought to myself, well, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, to me, I understood that verse as kind of referring to uh, happiness. 
when it said that out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of water. And I thought, that, that's what I'm looking for. And then the next verse explains it. It says, uh, this he was referring to the Holy Spirit that would be given to those that would believe. And so I thought, well, he's going to give me something to make that happen. And that really got my attention. And uh, so I went through uh, the course of uh, about one year. I was really uh, thinking and, and, and seeking. And, and sometimes I, 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 I would give up and say, well, I don't know if I can do it. But, you know, I struggled through the whole thing. And it just so happens that I was working with a guy at the hospital. We worked in the same department. So he was a believer. He was a Christian. And I would be asking him my questions every day. So he answered a lot of my uh, questions that I, that I asked of him. So every day we, we'd be talking about those kind of things. And he, um, he subscribed for me um, a magazine, Decision Magazine by Billy Graham. So I was starting to receive those through the post office, and I was reading everything that was in there. And in there... Um, Billy Graham had advertised uh, two of the books that he that he had written at about, around that time, Peace with God and World of Flame. And I thought to myself, well, I, I was going to go to Ottawa that summer and I was going to see my brother Joe, who was living there, and him and his wife Sheila. I said, well, I'm there. I'm going to look for a bookstore and see if I can find those books by Billy Graham. So uh, my wife and I went down there and while we were there, we, we did go to a bookstore and my brother knew where there was one and even though he wasn't a believer either at that time and and I and I was able to find those two books by Billy Graham World of Flame and and Peace with God I read through those books when I was done reading those two books all all my questions were pretty well answered and uh, the friend of mine that I was working with one day he said to me uh, uh, when are you going to accept the Lord and uh in those days, uh, you know, you could still smoke uh, even in public buildings at the hospital. So we're sitting there in a the cafeteria, and he asks me that question. When are you going to accept the Lord? I said, I, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. And he said to me, why not? Well, you'll have to wait till next time to hear why Alan thought that way. But what about you? Have you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? If not, what's holding you back? God is offering you forgiveness, new life, and peace with Him forever. And if you knew what it cost Him to do this, and what it will cost you if you reject His gift, you just might change your mind. You see, Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. Then God raised Him up from the dead, confirming that justice had been served. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Won't you put your trust in Jesus today? If you have any questions or comments or would like a copy of today's program, write to us at The Storyteller, P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. That's P.O. Box 1001, Bemidji, Minnesota, 56619. Our phone number is 877-766-4648. That's 877-766-4648. We're also online at withoutreservation.com. Thanks for listening. And remember, the greatest story took place at the cross. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friends, there's more to Alan's story, so be sure to join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller.